Welcome back. This is lesson 13 of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session 8, and this is the last video of this session. So here we will summarize everything we learned in this session. Let me just scroll up and see what we covered here. The use case we covered for this uh, session was the user comes to our website, they upload an image, and we want to help them to classify, to put this image into one of the 10 different categories. And we use uh, a neural network for that, not just a neural network, a convolutional neural network, which is a special kind of neural network that works well with images. To train a neural network, this convolutional neural network, we use TensorFlow, which is a library for actually training neural networks, and Keras, which is a higher level abstraction on top of TensorFlow. So we didn't really use TensorFlow, we used Keras, and internally Keras uses TensorFlow for making all these things that we did. Yeah, so we saw how to load images. We also saw that many neural networks are already made available. Somebody trained them and just made them available for us to use. So there are a bunch of available neural networks that we can just take and use, start using for building our applications. And what is more, instead of just using them as is, we can build on top of these models. So this is something we did here in lesson five. So we took a model that was already trained. We kept the convolutional layers. To remind you, the reason we need convolutional layers is to extract the vector representation of an image. So training these convolutional layers takes a lot of time. And somebody already did this for a different data set. So we can just take this and build on top of that. Yeah, so we saw how to do this, how to read images. Then we built our first neural network. Uh, we took an exception model and then we extracted the vector representation and added one dense layer to get the classification. Then uh, we learned what is the learning rate, which is a parameter that controls how fast the model can train. And we saw that fast learners aren't always the best learners. So this is a parameter we need to tune. Yeah, so we did this. Uh, we saw how to save model at each iteration. Yeah, let's say if this at this iteration we have a good model, but then on the next step the model is worse, we want to be able to save it so it doesn't get lost because uh, with every iteration the weights of the model are actually overwritten. And then we saw how to add more dense layers to our model. We experimented with the size of the internal layer. We talked about regularization and dropout. The so dropout is freezing a part of the network in order to avoid overfitting. So we did that. We experimented with dropout rate, which is a parameter that controls how much of the layer we freeze. And then augmentation is another way of fighting overfitting by generating many, many different images from existing images. So from one image, we can generate infinitely many different images by rotating, shifting them, and doing other image transformations. And then finally, we trained a larger model. At the beginning, we said we can train a smaller model using 150 by 150 images. Uh, we can do this for experimenting, but then at the end, we train a model on larger images. And this model was able to achieve 90% accuracy. And then we took this model and we checked this model on the training data set and actually on the training data set. So I think here I have evaluation results from the other model. I will not change it. it, can be like that. Yeah, so we saw that it actually didn't overfit. It was good. And then we saw how to, yeah, there is no image of pens here anymore, but we saw how to load an image and then run a model and to get the predictions. So this is what we did in this uh, session. And that was probably quite long and difficult. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in learning more, there will be explore more session. So there are other data set that contain fashion items. You can add them, experiment with them. I still need to add links. So we'll add links in GitHub eventually, hope sooner than later. Then there are other libraries for generating augmentations. When we were introducing Dropout to give you some intuition of what it is doing, I gave an example that it's kind of similar to just having a patch, a black patch over an image. There are actually libraries that can do this sort of augmentations. Uh, I don't think Keras can do this. I'm, I'm not sure, but there are libraries like Albumin Documentations that can actually do that. And you can use augmentations with Keras, with PyTorch, with other libraries. And actually, yeah, so another thing you can experiment with, let me uh, edit here. You can uh, use PyTorch instead of TensorFlow and Keras or other libraries. There is also MXNet, for example, so use PyTorch or MXNet instead of TensorFlow or Keras. And there are also other architectures, other neural networks. So we use exception here, but if you remember Keras applications, there is a huge table with different models. You can take a different model, for example, ResNet 50, which is slightly less accurate, but it's also faster. You can try that. Or there is a good model called MobileNet. It's also slightly less accurate, but even more faster. Or there is an Inception ResNet model that is super slow, but also super accurate. So there are many different alternatives. And if you're looking for more accuracy, 
case, you can use this inception ResNet. If you're looking for a faster model, you can use mobile net, for example. There are other projects you can do. For example, this is something we will do in the homework. We'll classify cats and dogs. I also found a data set for classifying hot dog versus not hot dog. If you saw a TV show called Silicon Valley, then maybe you know what I'm talking about. So there was an app that was doing exactly that. And there is also a data set. I think it was extracted from ImageNet. There are images of hot dogs. There are images of not hot dogs. And you can build a model for that. And what we actually, in this session, we talked about an example of online classifieds. And on Kaggle, you can find data sets from Avito, which is the biggest online classifieds website in Russia. So they hosted five or six maybe competitions on Kaggle. And many of these competitions have image data there. So you can just take this data and train a model for predicting the category based on an image. It would be quite a nice project. So if you are looking into experimenting more with these things. And with that, that's actually it. So I hope you enjoyed this session. And in the next session, we will talk about taking this model and deploying it with AWS Lambda. So see you soon.